Well, I got a special show lined up for you today. How I built my guitar. <laughs> um, last summer I sent off to Martin for a uh, acoustic guitar kit. Having never built one before, it, it took a while. I got it in September. It came with a thin little booklet. I should have brought that out here, but I didn't. Um, with with some, some tips and suggestions and, and pictures there. Um, but even before I started building this thing, I, I was familiar with some of the process involved, and I knew some of the materials that I would need in order to actually put together an acoustic guitar. So I, I figured I'd take this show <coughs> to show you all of the things that I built in order to build a guitar. <laughs> So, one of the things would be these clamps. See, I, I just got some, some twist bar and some lock nuts and washer and a wing nut. So these are, are clamps that can go onto the body of a guitar to hold the top and, and back on as you're gluing it. Well, I needed a bunch of them. So uh, I made a bunch of square ones. So I've got a dozen of those. And then I made some, some round-ended ones to fill out. These are with like just a, uh, a clothes hanger rod. Same deal. And then on the end, twist on the top. Um, so that's how I, I glued the top and the bottom onto the guitar. This is a neck jig so they gave me a neck but I had to do some trimming on the neck so this clamps into a vise on this end and then I clamp the neck onto this or actually on this end and I, I clamp the neck onto this and this is a little stay here so I can clamp the neck on there and that way I could radius the back and, and everything else so that's that's a jig for the neck that I, that I made in order to work on the neck. Now this is a very special sanding block. See there's a hinge there. That's so I can adjust the height on this, this piece right here. That way I got a, a five degree angle. Because once I had the sides all glued together and in a shape. I had to put a radius on it because the back has a bend and a curve going both ways, like this and like this. So I needed that five degree radius. So I need, needed something so I could sand along on that. This is just a block of wood with some sandpaper on it. Um, now, to get really fine sanding on, and to do a, a really good job, I believe in hand sanding as opposed to the machine run sanders. Um, and this way I can go with the grain and, and I can get all of the, the lines out and everything else. Here's another one that's like that. And then there's this one where basically it's the same thing, but I took a shop rag and doubled it up on there. So it's a soft pad, but it's square. And, and this I could use going around the sides and right now, I think I've got about 400 abrasive on there. Um, so I, I used, I think I used 80 for some, but I used 120 for most, 150, 320, 400, 600, uh, 1,000. I know I had 3,000 and $5,000 for finishing on the sanding on the, on the, on the finish. Here's an entire box of mini clamps. Because the other thing I did was I went out and I purchased clamps in advance. And these were really like handy. They're just little C clamps. Never have enough clamps. Over here, a towel on the table to protect the guitar while I'm working on it. So I could lay it down on the towel and I, I could do all my sanding and everything else. This is a combination. It's got a bastard file on this side and it has a rounded rasp on this side. And I used it for shaping, especially on like the neck and some of the metal parts that I fabricated. 
So there's that. And then there's this, which is a curtain rod dowel that I put sandpaper on it. It's wooden, so I could... This really, really good for going around the guitar. And also for doing little radius stuff. It almost works like a rasp, but you can much finer than you would get on a, on a file. This is an angled sanding block. And this was, I have a dovetail neck on the thing, and this was used for precision sanding in order to fit the dovetail into the block and to get the neck to run true on the guitar. Here's another one like that. This has two sides on it. Very handy thing. And here's, here's one with just a, a, a little sh segment on it. This can get into the small spots and everything else. So even the little scrap wood, use a little uh, rubber cement on there and then put your sandpaper on there and cut it down. Works beautifully. Um, here's a, a teeny tiny miter box. I use this for, for cutting some delicate parts by hand with a very fine saw. Now this, this is a saw that I made. No, this ain't the saw. This is just a feeler gauge, but I made a saw out of a feeler gauge. I don't know where that is right now. But in order to make a saw out of a feeler gauge, what you do is you open it up, you clamp this into a vise, Go over it first with a bastard file, then go over it again with a rasp. You're going the other way. You want to use rougher and rougher. And then I did like crisscross cuts, about six of them with a hacksaw blade, and that made these all into tiny little saws. And the, the best part about them is you use those for cutting on the nut. And you can use the feeler gauges. They have numbers on there, so you get the exact thickness of your strings. So you can have very narrow cuts or wider cuts as need be in order to gauge for your strings on both the nut and the saddle if you're if you're also doing grooves in the saddle. But a very easy tool to make and you can buy these for about three bucks and if you were to buy um, a, a set of uh, saws for, for, the, for the nut you're, you're looking at, at spending an enormous amount of money like 40, 50, 50 bucks, but it's very easy to make a saw out of a feeler gauge. This is a block of wood. Now I cut a radius on this that matches the radius of the neck, and I use this for pounding the frets in. So I would push the, the I'd cut the fret to size, I'd, I'd push it on to the fretboard, and then I'd pound it into the slot. Worked really well. I love this thing. This is a little template that I made for the top. And I use this for, for laying up stuff, but I also use this for, for gluing on the supports on the back. I know some people have this thing with the rods and you, you can push, but um, so all of the um, support bracing in here, uh, I can get to either from the hole or from the edges. And that, that way I was able to, to glue on all the support bracing for the top. So this became a handy little tool. Now these... This was for holding in the waist of the guitar. So that would go in the waist, and that way I'd have a bulb out here and a bulb back here in order for gluing on the rim. And this was to hold the length of the guitar. So it'd be like that. <laughs> um, it worked, and, and that's kind of what they had in the directions and what they showed you. Um, some other luthiers find other things. And then I wanted to hold it stable for sanding, so I, I made some more tools. I made this, which is a jig to hold the body of the guitar. And then I used some turnbuckles and, and some 
uh, uh, threaded rod in order to make clamps. So I could clamp the guitar in here and that way I could sand the edges. So I, I put that on my table and I had it tied in place and, and that way I could sand the edges and, and get the radius on the back and hold everything nice and steady. And like I said, I got these made out of turnbuckles and scrap wood. <laughs> Worked out really well. So I made that so I no longer had to use these because this one was for there. And this one would have been for there to hold the length and the, the width. But these, these work. And this is a piece of steel with a bunch of holes in it. But they're graduated holes. And what you might ask are these for? Well, this is because I wanted to make some hardwood dowels to a specific size. Because the neck came with those little holes. You know, for, for on your 5th fret, your 7th fret, your 12th fret, for your little plastic dots. I didn't want to use plastic, I wanted to use wood. And they were different sized holes, so I had to have different sized dowels. And I wanted my dowels made out of walnut. I have walnut. So, what I did was, was cut a piece of walnut and I pounded through the holes and then I get a hard wood dowel. And from that I was able to, to cut down little dots that I could put on the neck of the guitar. So after looking at all that rough stuff, oh, and right here, just off camera, I can do a twist and show you that. That's my little jigsaw. I do a lot of cutting on that. And there's my drill press. They both come in handy, but they weren't necessary. And here's the guitar I built. Ta-da! was talking about clamps well I'm just gonna clear some space here on my little fold-out table because these by no means are the only clamps that I used Also used these because these are nice giant bar clamps. The back was two pieces that I had to glue together and I did that over on the shop table over there. I use these which are little quick clamps got one of these. I don't remember what I used that for, but I know I used it for something. And I always, for years, I'd buy a, these little handy spring clamps at the hardware store. Um, every time I'd go in there, and here's another fun little clamp. It's got a little bit of a reach to it, and it's a quick clamp. So I use those too. Oh, and then these, I got a deal on these. I found those at uh, um, with Harbor Freight Tools. These are up by the cash register for like a couple of bucks. I couldn't believe it. And then this 
is an awesome C-clamp. And you can use this or one like it for, for clamping and gluing on, on bridges on acoustic guitars. And I, I got these for like six bucks as opposed to what you pay from one of the luthier stores. And, and they come in different sizes because they're handy to have. You can never have too many clamps, I'm telling you. So yeah. Oh, and chisels. I actually made a chisel out of a, a screwdriver because I needed a fine little tiny chisel. C-clamps because you can never have too many C-clamps or clip clamps because you can never have too many of those and this is one that I already had and there you go ta-da <laughs> so yeah fun little project but that's a lot of clamps <laughs> So, so when you're going to build a guitar, do a little research, figure out what you need, and then don't be afraid to stop and, and to, to fabricate what you need in order to complete the job. <laughs> so um, after this, I'm going to run a slideshow and show you all the different stages because I did take photographs of all of that. So you, you will le learn the secret of the clothespin.
Thank you.